So today we will add dash ability to our ball game. Like we can see here. So let's get started. So we need to go to the controller blueprint. Let's find some space and uh, let's start working. So we want our player to dash when we press the F key. So we will get our keyboard event for the F key. So when F is pressed, we want our player to dash. We also need a variable. We will say can dash, compile and by default it should be true because when the game starts, we want to be able to dash. So we will check if we can dash with a branch. So if we can dash, first we want to set this variable to false. So we cannot just keep dashing again and again and again. And uh, we also need one more variable. Let's call it dash cooldown. So this will be a delay before we reset our dash so that we cannot keep dashing again and again and again. Its type will be float. And let's compile and uh, dash cooldown. The default value should be, let's just add two second delay. So there will be a two second delay between different dashes. So now we want to get our player. And from the player, we will get the ball component. And to the ball component, we will add velocity. Or let's say for the ball component, we will set velocity. So we will use this node. It will be set physics linear velocity. And we also need the camera variable from our player. So let's get the camera variable. And from the camera, let's get the forward vector. Let's multiply the forward vector by some number. I will multiply it by 10,000. So let's convert this uh, pin to float. And I will say 10,000. So now before connecting it here, I will split the pin. Let's also split this one. And I will connect only the X and Y parts. I will not connect the Z value. We don't want to be able to dash upwards or downwards. So that is why we connect only these two pins. We do not connect Z. Now after doing this, we want a delay. And after this delay, I will keep it at 0 0.2 seconds. After this delay, we will reset our player's velocity so let's uh, do it again set physics velocity set physics linear velocity and let's keep it at zero so after this we want to wait for the dash cooldown so let's add a delay node. So in this case, we will wait for two seconds before enabling the dash ability again. So let's set can dash. And we can say yes, we want to be able to dash now. So this will make sure that there is a small delay of two seconds between multiple dashes or between different dashes. Let's see if we can dash. I think the dash ability is complete with this, but let's check. So I will press the F key and yeah, we can dash. Now there's one more thing. I did not connect this yet. So let's see what happens if we do connect this. So now if we try to dash, we can actually dash upwards as well. And we can dash in the downwards direction as well. Sometimes there is uh, this thing with uh, these different game, game engines. 
that uh, if something is uh, traveling at a very high speed it tends to go through objects so for example at a very high speed our ball can actually go through this ground floor so we can try dashing and uh, sometimes it will go through the floor as you can see i just press f and uh, at a very high velocity it can go through the floor so that is one of the reasons i do not like to dash in upwards or downwards direction so i will keep this pin disconnected and uh, there's one more thing so as you can see after we stop dashing our ball st still keeps rotating and i like that but uh, if you want something different for example if you want the ball to stop rotating as well we can do that by using set physics uh, angular velocity we can try that so let's double click here and from here we can say set physics angular velocity in degrees and it is zero let's connect it so after we move we can see that uh, after dashing this just makes the ball to stop at stop totally so our ball just stops completely i do not like that but if you do want that you can use it i will remove it I will not use this node. So our dash ability is done now. As you can see, we can dash. But we also want to apply some field of view effect to the camera so that it looks a little bit better. So let's make a custom event here. Let's call it start FOV. I want a new custom event as well. Let's say end FOV. We also want a new variable. So first let's say we want a variable to keep track of the old FOV. So let's say old FOV. That is the original field of view of our camera. We need it. And let's say we also need a variable to check if we have applied fov so let's say has applied fov this will be boolean so now we want to be able to apply fov only if we have not already applied it so we will check if we have not already applied it so we will get the node boolean and we will get a branch so if we have not already applied our FOV, first we want to set this variable. So let's set has applied FOV. Let's say yes, we have applied FOV now. So if we have not already applied FOV, only then we can apply the FOV. And we set the this variable here to true. After that, we need a timeline. So let's add a timeline. We will call it FOV timeline. We will go in this timeline and we will add a track. We will call it FOV track. The track length will be 0 0.1. And let's add two keys. So, so for the first key, let's say time is 0 and uh, value is 0. And for the second key, the time is uh, 0 0.1 and the value is 1 so let's zoom it and uh, for both of these keys let's say auto so this will make it a little bit smoother let's go back in our event graph and now we also want to set our old fov so let's set old fov we want our camera so let's get player and uh, get camera and from the camera let's say get field of view and we will set it to our old fov and then we want to play the timeline so now when the timeline is updating 
we want to set the FOV of our camera. So let's again get the camera. So we will set the field of view. We will use this function. So let's see what we need to set it to. So we need alert node and our FOV track variable will go in the alpha and our old FOV will go in A and to the old FOV we will add some number. So I will add 10. You can try different numbers and see what happens and we will connect it to B. And we will connect the return value to the field of view. So now let's also add the logic for end FOV. So first we want to make sure that we have applied FOV. So if we have not applied FOV, we cannot end FOV. So let's say, let's check if we have applied FOV. And if we have applied FOV, then we can reverse the timeline and this direction gives us uh, the direction in which the timeline is playing so if the timeline is playing in reverse it will be backwards let's get it let's compare this direction and we will say this one equal enum and let's say backwards so if our timeline was playing in backwards when it finished Let's say, let's get a branch. So if our timeline was playing in reverse, if our timeline was playing backwards when it finished, then we know that uh, it was because of this event. It was because we ended the FOV and uh, we need to reset this variable. So let's say we set as applied FOV and we set it to false. So we leave it like it. So now we actually want to apply this FOV to our player, to our camera. So we will go here and uh, after we set the velocity, we will say start FOV. And before we set the velocity to zero, we will say end FOV. So I think that should do it. Let's see if it works. So yeah, we can see the field of view effect on the camera. So we have applied the dash ability and also the field of view effect on our camera.